guys, so here in this video, we're actually going to calculate how much heat is needed to undergo different phase changes. Um, so with this, you'll need your notes and tables B and T. Make sure you take both of them out because we are going to label at least table B. Uh, we're going to kind of review some heat involved with phase changes and talk about heat diffusion, heat of vaporization, and just go through some practice problems. So again, to remind you the phase changes, when we go from a solid to a liquid, we, um, the molecules will absorb 80 calories of heat. When it does the opposite, it's going to release 80 calories of heat. When you go from a liquid to a gas, those particles are going to absorb 540 to 600 calories of heat. And under um, condensation, when you go from a gas to a liquid, it releases that heat. And of course, we have the values for sub, um, sublimation and deposition. So in this video, we're really going to concentrate on what these values are. And these are just specific to water. So if you have other substances, those other substances um, will have their own amount of heat being absorbed or released during each of their fa um, these phase changes. Again, to remind you, um, we have a heating curve here. So we're start starting at a solid and ending at a gas. And when we're undergoing um, melting, for example, we're going from a solid to a liquid, and that has a certain amount of heat. That's the same amount of heat as it would be for freezing. Same thing with condensation and vaporization. Those are going to be the same amount of heat as well, just going undergoing different phase changes. Right? So we're talking about the first thing, heat of fusion. This has a symbol, a symbol of H and a subscript little f for fusion. So this is what we need, or the heat needed to melt a substance. Now traditionally it is for melting, but we know that it's the same um, heat needed to freeze a substance as well. So going from a solid to a liquid. On table B, they give you one of the values uh, for heat diffusion for water. Again, this is for water, so don't forget it's a different substance. You can't use these values. So the value that they give you for heat diffusion is 334J, so that's joules per gram. What they don't give you is this value, 80 calories per gram. Now, the regents in June probably won't have that, but all of our practice problems will. So make sure that underneath or near heat of fusion for water, you also write down 80 cal, C-A-L, um, make sure it's lowercase, and then per gram. Take a look down at table T now. We'll, look, uh, we'll use the heat equations, and there's three heat equations there. This one for heat of fusion is Q, and Q is actually our value for heat. And that's equal to M, which is our mass, So actually, I'll go through heat. Make sure you, you're labeling this as well. Heat is equal to mass times the heat of fusion for a substance. And again, this is between the solid and liquid phases. So for the heat of fusion, again, you're going to go back to table B and figure out what value to use if this is water. If it's not water, again, you can't use it. Heat of vaporization, this one makes a little bit more sense because we're going from a liquid to a gas. So it's the amount of heat needed to vaporize, or if we go the opposite direction, condense a substance. So for table B, they give you the value in joules per gram. So they give you 2,220, or excuse me, 2,260 gram, or joules per gram. And again, this is for water. Go ahead and write this one in. It's 540 calories per gram. That value is definitely going to be needed for um, our practice problems. If you flip over to table T, they give you Q, which again is heat, is equal to mass times heat of vaporization. And if it's for water, that's the value that you're going to get from table B. If it's not water, don't bother using these because it's going to be wrong. All right, so here, how much heat in joules is needed to melt 15 grams of ice at zero degrees Celsius? So we need to know which equation we're going to use. So we have here that we're dealing with just water. It's going from one state of matter to another. So in this case, since it's melting, it's going from a solid to a liquid. So we know, to the, know this as being heat of fusion. And it was to know how much heat is actually going to be needed. So we'll go over to table T. If we look at heat of fusion, that's Q is equal to M times HF. 
So in this case, where they're asking us for heat, so they're asking us for Q, um, and then in joules, so we'll look at that in a bit. So first, the M is 15 grams. They give us 15 grams right here. And now we have to figure out from table B which HF to use. Now this problem told us specifically that they wanted joules. So we're going to use the heat of fusion that's written in joules. So it's 3,304 joules per gram. And let's see if we can cancel anything. Um, in fact, you know what, I'm going to kind of write this out a little bit easier for you, so you might recognize it a bit more as being this. So this might help out with canceling. If we set this over 1, and we're multiplying the two, so we have grams here and grams there. We're left with the unit that we want, so we're left with joules, and that's the unit that we want for Q. So go ahead and put this into your calculator. So you'll end up with 5,000 and 10 joules. Okay, so let's go on to another problem. When 30 grams of a substance is completely evaporated, so you know what, I want to just start writing stuff. When I know that the mass is 30 grams, it says 620 calories is absorbed. So, in this case, they're telling us that our heat is going to be in calories, so it's 620 calories. And they want to know what the heat of vaporization is for this substance. Now remember, they're not saying that this is water, so you can't use with um, water's value. So you want to find out the heat of vaporization. That's your unknown. So let's go over to your equations. You have Q is equal to mass times H subscript V for vaporization. We know we want to solve for vaporization, or heat of vaporization. So let's rearrange our equation. HV is equal to Q over M. Now let's go ahead and plug in our values. We have 620 calories over 30.0 grams. And plug this into your calculator. Here we have an answer with three sig figs. So we'll end up with 20.7. And let's keep our units, calories because we can't cancel anything, so it's calories per gram. And we know that heat of vaporization has a unit of calories per gram, and that's acceptable. All right. So to summarize, use these heat equations when given two of the three. So you're either given heat, either in calories or joules, you're given mass, or you're given heat of vaporization or heat of fusion in calories per gram or joules per gram. Um, know that water melts and freezes at zero degrees Celsius, so if they say... Um, you know, water at zero degrees Celsius. That's when they're talking about melting or freezing. If it's 100 degrees Celsius, it's going to be vapor, um, evaporation or vaporization and condensation. Um, and the biggest thing here, and one more thing to add, is that these are for phase changes. You'll see later on that there's a third equation on table T that deals with heat. So we want to make sure that we know that these are phase changes. All right. All right, so let me know if you guys have any questions. Take care.